In this video, I'm going to show you three simple Python applications designed specifically for VBA users. If you've been thinking about giving Python a try, then these examples are a perfect place to start. You can download all the source code from the link in the description. Now let's jump right in. The first project we're going to build is a simple quiz app. It will ask us a question, check our answer, and then show our score at the end. We'll start by creating a dictionary that stores all our questions along with their correct answers. And this keeps our code flexible and easy to expand. And if you want to add new questions later, we can drop them into the dictionary without changing the main logic of the code. A dictionary is similar to an array because it lets us store a collection of values. Now, in an array, we only store the values themselves. With a dictionary, we store each value together with a unique key. That key helps us to identify and retrieve the value later. Now, this works perfectly for our quiz application because we can store each question as the key and its correct answer as the value. And that keeps everything neatly paired together. Now that we have our dictionary set up, let's move on to the main part of our quiz app. We start by creating a variable called score and setting it to zero. This will keep track of how many questions the user answers correctly. Next, we loop through the dictionary using for question answer in question item. Using the items function gives us both the key and the value from the dictionary, which is very useful. This means we get the question and the associated correct answer each time we go through the loop. Inside the loop, we display the question and we use input to capture the user's response. The letter F before the string means that we can include a variable within the string and we include the variable by enclosing it in curly braces. Then we compare the user's answer to the correct answer. We use the lower function to convert both strings to lowercase so that capitalization doesn't cause a correct answer to be marked incorrect. If the answer matches, then we print the user was correct and we add one to the score. The plus equals notation is a shortcut for saying score equals score plus one. If the answer doesn't match, we show the correct answer to the user. Now, after the loop has completed, we display the user's final score. And if we pass the questions dictionary to the len function, it will give us the number of items in the dictionary. If we add more questions later, then we don't have to update this line. So let's run our application. We give Dublin as the first answer and it tells us we're correct. And we also get the second one correct. Now the third one will enter the wrong answer. And you can see that it tells us it was incorrect and tells us what the correct answer was. And then it gives us our final score, which is two out of three. So this app is great for showing how Python logic works. But now let's look at something a bit more practical. We're going to use Python's pandas library to generate a simple report. And it's kind of like VBA on steroids. If you're enjoying this and want more practical Python examples like this, make sure to subscribe. I've got a lot more coming. In this project, we are going to work with the Netflix data in this CSV file. We want to count the number of movies and TV shows released each year, and then we want to write those results to a new CSV file. We start by importing the pandas library, and pandas provides us powerful functions for reading, cleaning, and analyzing data. So the import keyword is used to give us access to any library we have installed. The phrase aspd is a common Python convention that allows us to refer to pandas as pd in the rest of our code. Next, we load our data set. We assume the file is named Netflix and is located in the same folder as this Python file. The read CSV function returns a data frame, which will be placed in the variable df. A data frame is like a two-dimensional array in VBA, but the main difference is that it has much more functionality. Now our data set includes a column called date and it, and we only want the year from that column, and we want to place it in a new column, and this is how we do it. So we assign the column year to the result of this operation. So let's break it down. DF year creates a new column in the data frame, and this is where our result will be placed. 
DF date added refers to the date added column in the data frame and string tells Python to treat the data in that column as text. And the final part is what we call slicing notation. The number before the colon sets the starting position. So positive numbers start from the left, zero being the first character, and negative numbers start from the right, minus one being the last character. Therefore, minus four means start at the fourth character from the end, and because there's no number after the colon, we select everything from that starting point to the very end of the string. So let's print out the data frame to see where we're at. And now if we run the code, what you'll see is that our data frame, similar to before, but now we've got the new year column. And that has the year which we extracted from the date column. Now we are ready to build a pivot table. And this will help us count how many titles were added each year, group by type, such as movies and TV shows. So the index is basically how we're breaking down the data. We're grouping by type, that's whether it's a TV show or a movie, and then by year. For the values, we're counting how many shows are in each group. We're using the show ID column for that, with the count function as our aggregate function. So this will give us the number of shows of each type for every year. After that, we rename the column that stores the counts. So instead of the original column name show ID, we change it to something easier to understand like total. The in place parameter here controls whether the changes are applied to the original data. So if true, the operation modifies the original data frame directly. If false, which is the default, the operation returns a new data frame with the changes. And that leaves the original data untouched. And when we run this code, what you can see is that we now have our data and it's grouped by year. And within that, it's grouped by type. And you can see that we have the total header there as well. The last thing we want to do is save our pivot table to a new CSV file. Let's run the final code and check the results. If we open the new CSV file, you can see the data as we expected with the count for the year broken into movie and TV shows. So that completes our application. We successfully loaded data, cleaned it, summarized it and exported a useful report. And this is a good example of how powerful the pandas libraries are. This next application is a good one to try, particularly if you come from an Excel VBA background. We're going to read this data here, remove any duplicates, sort the result and replace the existing data with the new data. So let's jump right in. First, we import pandas. It's the main library we'll be using for reading, editing and writing Excel data. Next, we'll create a variable to store the file name of the Excel file. We then use the read Excel pandas function, which reads the worksheet data to a data frame. And we saw that this is basically a table of the data in memory. Let's run this code and see if we are reading the data correctly to the data frame. And you can see from the output that it matches the data from the Excel file. We'll now remove any duplicate rows and then sort everything alphabetically by country using the following code. The drop duplicates function removes all duplicates from the data frame and creates a new data frame with the result. And then we sort that new data frame by country, which is the only column. Now, if this is a bit too complex to understand, then you can break it down into two steps like this. We first of all remove the duplicates and store the result in the no duplicates data frame. We then sort that data frame and store the resulting data in the new list variable. So now let's run the original code and see what we are getting. And you can see that all the duplicates are removed and the remaining data is sorted. Next, we want to write our clean data back to the worksheet. To do that, we create an Excel writer object. And Panda uses this to save data frames into Excel files. We set the engine to open pixel, and this is the library that allows us to overwrite existing sheets. 
And we then set the mode to A, which stands for append. So that means that we're updating the workbook. Finally, when writing to a worksheet that already exists, we need to tell pandas what to do. In this case, we use if sheet exists equals overlay, which lets us write over the existing data in the worksheet. Before we write the new data, let's clear the data from the old rows in column A. But we want to keep the header intact. We first of all store the sheet in a variable, and then we iterate through the rows of that worksheet using iter rows. We set the minimum row to two as we don't want to remove the header, and we set the last row to sheet max row. We then set the cell value to none, and this clears any data from it. So now we've all this done, we want to write the data back to Excel. And we don't want to include the index, so we set it to false. And we don't want to write the header, as it is already on the worksheet, so we set header to false. And once we've written the data back, we must close the file so as to save the data. So let's run our code to see if it actually works. And when we open the workbook, what you can see is that we've got our data with the duplicates removed and sorted in alphabetical order. If you want to get even more advanced with your Python code, then check out my video on creating a data entry form for Excel using Python. See you in the next video.